As we begin a new year, I just want to thank all of our listeners, our patrons, and our sponsors for being there for us and getting us through another year. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. And a super shout-out goes out to our boss-level patrons, Christopher and Patrick. It's the freaking Blursties! Oh, my God! Part deuce. Uh-oh. So pull up your pants... Pull out your eyes and get that blood pumping. <sighs> and if you douche monkeys think this intro's the worst, oh, just you wait. Boring. For what we've got in store for you. Oh, yeah. You've just locked into the 3 Big Gamer Show. Welcome to the 3-Bit Gamer Show. I'm JD. This is Peterson. And Aaron. And we are now a shock jock podcast. <laughs> dude, I, inspired I, by the douche. Dude, when we're back to in person and I finally have my soundboard at my fingertips again, oh. I haven't gone to 3bitgamershow.com slash soundboard in so long, but... <laughs> It just makes me sad to think that I could be doing fart noises literally over anybody talking right now. You, If you remember the old school, JD used to just insert fart noises occasionally into the episodes. Do you remember that? Yes. It was the best. It was a purer time. That was maybe the worst thing we lost in 2020. <laughs> <laughs> the ability to do fart noises. JD's selection on when fart noises got put into the episodes. Peterson Productions, uh, for all of its merits, is a real conservative institution when it comes to fart noises. And man, I cannot get those guys to put in half as many as I want. You know what? Uh, 2021, Peterson Productions vows to insert more fart noises into the episodes. <laughs> On that note, guys, it's the Blurseys Part 2. Deuce. It is... Can we call it Part Deuce? Part Deuce. Deuce. Oh, um, oh. so it is the Blursties. If you missed last week's episode, and I don't know, the last four years of the podcast is our annual worst of the year awards show. Uh, we pick, we have 10 different categories. The, uh, the hosts we will nominate for, uh, nominations for each category. Oh, and, and some surprise guests. And then finally, uh, once we've nominated them all, you, the listeners, vote, and then we will announce the winners probably around the end of January. So um, without further ado, I'll just let you guys know the categories that we're going through today, and then we'll get it right into it. Have I missed anything, Peterson? Nope, you got it. Okay. Here are the five categories for today's episode. Uh, first, most overrated, then least favorite character. Worst sequel, worst name, and finally, to round out the entire show this year, is Worst Decision. You know, that one's the primo. That's that's the one that everyone is fighting for. The, you know, Worst Studio is kind like of a it. gimme sometimes. Like, it's kind of easy to, to, to lock that down or at least lock down a nomination. But, man, Worst Decision is always like a very packed category. It's hot. It's hot. Okay, uh, let's start with most overrated. Most overrated. And our first one, we're actually going to kick it back to you guys, the listeners. And we have a nomination for most overrated from Jomero. Hey, bidders, it's Jomero. I'm throwing in my vote for the most overrated game of 2020. And I might be cheating a little bit here, as it's technically a collection of games. It is Super Mario 3D All-Stars. The reason why I think it's overrated is simply because it is little more than a direct emulated port of the three classic 3D Mario games. The original Super Nintendo collection of Super Mario All-Stars contained three 8-bit NES games, but their graphics got a huge 16-bit upgrade, and you also had the bonus content of the Lost Levels, also known as the actual Super Mario Bros. 2 in Japan. But Super Mario 3D All-Stars? No graphical upgrades, no bonus content, nothing. That is why I nominate it for the most overrated games of 2020. Thanks, guys. And by the way, if you add five more hosts to your show, will you have to change your name to the One Byte Gamer Podcast? 
One Bite Gamer. Ugh. Oh my gosh. Gosh. <laughs> the full like a... bite. It's, it's just so a full good. bite. <laughs> it's so good. I can't resist. We need to. I don't know. That's a lot of people. That's a lot of mics. Uh, so. <laughs> no, nominate... let's do this. Eight people, one show. It's going to. I'm telling you, it's not going to be horrible. No breaks. Hold on. <laughs> Wait. It's so Aaron. Good. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Eight uh, people would show. So uh, that's a nomination, a rare nomination for Nintendo for the classic Nintendo move of super undelivering on remasters of their old classics that everyone just wishes they could play. Uh, next, yeah, I, uh, I think. Well, sorry, I just want to jump no. in. Like Jomero said, I remember when this came out uh, earlier this year. It was. Uh, it was uh march i think um but it but people were so disappointed because they were so excited that this was coming as jomero said but there was nothing to get excited about it was just ports of those games no like he said no new levels it didn't it didn't feel any different and that's a huge bummer right i think a missed opportunity they could have just added a little extra yeah, no uh, a little upgrade, little bit yeah. extra, done some upgrades, and it would have been uh, a slam dunk. But I do remember people being disappointed by this. Mm-hmm. All right, Peterson, you've got our next nomination. Oh, you know where I'm going. Most overrated. <laughs> okay, I ha- I cannot shut up about how much I hate this game. Nope. This game has been so big all year. Everybody played it. It came at just the right time. I mean, okay, granted this game's been out for a couple years, but it no one knew about it until this year. That's Among Us. Among Us is a uh is a little indie game where you essentially it's it's werewolf, right? It's werewolf or any version of that game. There's there's ten people in a match or however many you want to do. Two of the people are uh imposters and they go around killing the crewmates, right? And the crewmates just run around and do pointless tasks. The game is not fun. And I know, listen, I think even Aaron said this to me. You got to play with the right people. I played with so many different groups. I just don't like it. I don't think it's interesting. They didn't add any interesting elements to it. It doesn't work. It and it got so big and I don't get it. I People were going nuts about it and I just thought it was zero fun my gaming group always wanted to play it and i was like i'm out i'm just gonna go play rocket league or something like i just got to a point where i refused to play it because it's not fun to me at all i only played it with my coworkers, and it was and i don't know if they were all gamer i don't think they're all gamers but it was pretty pretty boring like there just isn't that much. Go- like I was fine with it because it was like kind of fun. We were on a Zoom call and like I lo- I love my coworkers to death, so we were just having a good time, like goofing around, chatting. But like the game itself is pretty not not good. The company couldn't handle. They did. They had no idea this. It was going to get this big. So when I first started, I, it was so hard to get into a game or to start a server to start our own game. And then they had hacking issues. And then if you just play with randos, because you're obsessed with this game for some weird reason, just play with randoms on the internet, people will leave if they're not the imposter because it's <laughs> so boring if you're not the impo- If you're not going around trying to kill people, the game is extremely boring. I don't know. I just, I liked the memes that came out of it. And that was the best thing that came out of this game. It did not deserve any <laughs> any of the accolades. I'm going to say it. It didn't deserve the accolades it got this year. Didn't deserve the hype. It wasn't fun. Good heavens. Okay, so Peterson <laughs> loved Among Us. Uh, my nomination for most overrated is The Last of Us Part 2. Uh, Dude, what do you mean overrated? It won every award. <laughs> it was properly <laughs> rated. I just... I So... I don't know, man. I played the first one. I thought it was good. I thought it was a. I thought it was appropriately dark, but from everything I've read, heard, and seen, and hell, Aaron told me a new thing that I didn't even know was in the game tonight that made me a little queasy. Uh, everything just sounds so awful. From like killing dogs, 
like being you're forced to kill dogs that's always cool they, um, they tried so hard to just shock value the whole game yeah and so that alone i'm kind of out on because i feel like that's a, a storytelling crutch that's just not even a good crutch Mm-mm. but uh, like i think the walking dead relies pretty heavily on that shit too mm-hmm. um everything that has used up all of their good story elements this is what they do they just but, go for like shocking stuff now the game itself was never to to me that uh compelling the gameplay it was just another kind of it was a very on rails stealth shooter uh well and it wasn't that that much different from the old one Yeah, yeah and so the fact that this one is the exact same thing uh, with a couple different elements and like you play as different characters, but it essentially boils down to just like an on rail stealth shooter. <sighs> I just can't believe that it was this hyped. The first one's great. Let let great things lie and just let them be done. And um, let's be honest, it only won awards because all the other AAA titles just totally <laughs> shit the bed. <laughs> Like on every. It's the only one that even pulled we it. Had, out, like we had a hard, time. a complete game. It's like, oh, we made an actual stable game where people can actually play. Award. Yep. Yep. There you go. Um, okay, so Aaron, what is your nomination for most overrated? Uh, most overrated game is Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven. There it uh, is. Yeah, it's it, it, okay. Not including PS four and regular Xbox. Uh, we're talking about like PC, PS5, because those are actually the only playable versions of this game. Um, I played it on PC. I played through uh, the three starting uh, life choices or life paths. Or I forget what they call them. It's not rememberable. Um, they all converge on the same plot, like 20 minutes in. So there's not really a starting life path. You're you all end up in the same area anyway so so mm. it doesn't even make any sense um i played through a little bit of it and then returned it just uh just just get it, get it <laughs> Aaron out of my face got got a got a, got a refund on this game yeah Dude, Three i bought hours it twice in. i bought the ps4 oh version God. i bought the strategy guide i bought the pc version and i returned everything <laughs> that oh is God. crazy oh what an oh, absolute man. Let down. And, and this is a game that for years we were promised would let you just chisel every single vein in your genitals. <laughs> and it turns out that it can't even fucking run, can't even <sighs> load a character. And I'm like, huh, there's some sort of disconnect. <laughs> it, it had major No Man's Sky energy uh, with a with a it, per capita seems about the same. They had to stop calling it an RPG and start calling it an adventure game because mm. it's not really an RPG anymore. You're not making decisions, are you? Whatever. I, like, you make decisions, but yeah, I don't think there uh, there are RPGs out there that do the decision-making better. Yeah. So yeah, I think I think this game just... Um, uh, look, I'm going to play it, but I just oh, well, think well, it's it. not what people were expecting, what people wanted. I mean... All of the bugs and glitches and all the other issues, notwithstanding, I think this game and and it's to be honest, it's highly rated on the PC. If you look it up, it's like nine out of ten, eight eighty five on Metacritic, that sort of thing. Like it's a highly rated game, and it's honestly not even. A, uh, <laughs> I know it's a finished game. I know it's a finished product, but we just know <laughs> it's going to be better, right? We know it's going to be better, and so. Yeah, I don't know. I just don't think I don't think Cyberpunk is was given the correct ratings on PC. Maybe next year, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe you can get that nine out of ten next year. Give me the option to make my genitals ginormous. I like, yeah. So what the hell? Aaron was disappointed. There was no slider option for the pain. I, I, this I is am blown away. I am blown away. JD that there was wasn't so a slider. <laughs> For for anything, there's not like a slider for anything below the belt. I was led to believe the, the exact opposite. Two penis options. I want. Big I want at least small. four. Yep. <laughs> Give me no five. Five. I need five. Micro. 
Below average, average. I want a robot penis. Larger. Of tw- this is Cyberpunk oh, 2077. Why? Make a robot penis. I, I thought, I honest to God that thought that was in the game. I swear to God they talked about that being a possibility. <laughs> Dude, I, I just This is another so one of down. JD's dreams that he thought was real. <laughs> Damn and it! I can't wait to choose the robot penis <laughs> option in <laughs> Cyberpunk. I keep having these. Um, okay, so <laughs> let's let's move on to our next category. Least favorite character. Okay, I will just kick this one off because I, this is this is near and dear to my heart. My least favorite character of 2020 was <laughs> Cl- was was my 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 favorite person, Cliff Blazinski. Cliffy. Cliffy, Cliffy B, B, the real Cliffy B, uh, the self-titled Tony Stark of video games himself. Uh, <laughs> the Tony who, Stark of video who, games. Who, oh. To be fair, I say this happened in 2020, but February of 2020 was a different 2020 than the 2020 that we say mm-hmm. when we say 2020. Mm-hmm. But that said... He did talk. This is you guys remember this happened many, many, many millennia ago when Cliffy B uh, had an Instagram post when he blamed the failure of his uh, of his latest game. Um, God, what was it? It was Boss Key Studios. But what was the uh, the game they were doing? Was this the one they put out like unfinished? lawbreakers yeah oh, and he said lawbreakers failed because it was too woke <laughs> oh my gosh i remember that <laughs> he said instead yeah, of the story yours. game instead of the story being this game looks great it became this is the game with the woke bro trying to push his hacky politics on us with gen- gender neutral bathrooms mm. um, cliffy b wrote that um he wrote that himself right okay and then he says in- yes this is him I'm, I'm reading the instagram post he says instead of these characters seem fun it was this is the studio with the ceo who refuses to make his female characters sexier <laughs> so here's here's what you can unpack from that which is my favorite <laughs> is not only is he very, very much patting himself on the back for not making his female characters sexier, but he is apparently under constant bombardment of people demanding that very thing. Dude, his life sounds fucking hard. Uh, Dude, he's got a wild life. <laughs> JD, that's why he. That's why he is writing his own memoir. <laughs> but this Cause... is... <laughs> this is the rare, yeah, exactly. This is the rare occasion when I have a personal connection to the least favorite character. Mm, and as Peterson yep. mentioned, a lot of this post was the fact that he was alluding to a larger memoir that he's been writing since 2018. So he's been writing a <laughs> memoir since he was in his late 30s. Uh, and I pointed that out to him uh, that that seemed a little, <laughs> a little odd. <laughs> and uh, he got very defensive, he very responded. salty, and then responded and then deleted the entire exchange, but not before I got screenshots because Cliffy B, the internet always remembers. Um, I just thought that was funny. I just. Yeah, dude, you had a, a you had a interaction with Cliffy B <laughs> making fun of his <laughs> memoir that he's writing. <laughs> Michael Scott style, somehow I manage at at the age of forty. He thinks he deserves a he thinks he deserves a memoir at forty. A memoir. So so, so um Mr. Woke Bro, I can't wait to read uh the upcoming memoir about uh your short but illustrious and very interesting life. Um <laughs> <laughs> Our next one. Oh, this is this one comes from Silverthorn. Is it that time already? The revolving cast of idiots requires my opinion on some <laughs> video game nonsense. Very well. I've done enough pillaging and looting for the day anyway. Now, where were we? Ah, yes. 
Worst character. So cocky. My nomination for worst character of 2020 is none other than Dr. Disrespect. But Silverthorn, you all cry, he did the bathroom thing last year. <laughs> but Silverthorn, you all cry, he did the wife thing two years ago. Ha, huh, of course you would say that. But in 2020, year of your lord... The worst character the internet has allowed to exist was banned from Twitch and doubled down on his persona to maintain his relevancy on platforms across time and space. And now he is more mustachioed, more braggadocious, and more mulleted than ever. Ugh, I can't even bother to go on. I feel nauseous. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Silverthorn <laughs> does not like Dr. Disrespect. By the way, dude, that that whole voicemail just killed just me. It is so excellent. <laughs> <laughs> it is dripping with condescension, which is exactly, exactly what, we what we expect want. from Silverthorn. Yep. Uh so it look in my head canon, and this is just a side note, my head canon, Silverthorn is a sword in a fantasy novel but now silverthorn is a uh, sentient sword and mm -hmm. this is mm -hmm. how that sword is always talking to you yeah and you have it in your scabbard and you're making decisions and that sword approves of none of them <laughs> and you're like you know what sword i really would just like to have a quest for once, please without just your lip. give me to somebody else. But no, I that's don't not why you carry around, around the silver anymore. thorn. You're like, there's a reason. There's <laughs> a reason you have it. <laughs> so, Silver Thorn nominates uh, Doctor Disrespect, who you might all know. He's the uh, streamer who always has uh, the handlebar mustache and the sunglasses and a mullet, and he's always uh, talking talking real loud. Super uh, original for an internet personality. Oh my god, has anyone ever thought of doing that personality I, before? I don't think so. Wow. There's a lot of copycats of this. I know. Oh that. yeah, he invented it. I'm sure. Well, yeah, he got and, he got in on it pretty early, right? Of the Twitch streaming. Yeah. That's why he's like super ginormous. That's why he's big. I mean, he's 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 been pretty he was, good. He's at been games doing it too. since Justin TV, friends. <laughs> that's 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 do you remember when it was justin.tv yeah uh -huh. yeah yep. um so yeah silverthorn nominates dr disrespect uh he has had a a rough couple years uh and he's just this continuing that train <laughs> can't catch a break piece of shit can't catch a break <laughs> speaking of pieces of shit peterson Oh, Lines here we up, go, dude. dude! Our number one our personal favorite piece. We of cannot shit. get away from this guy, <laughs> Randy Pitchford. Randall Do you Pitchford. want to, Randall? Randall Pitchford. <laughs> Call him by his his appropriate God given name, Randall <laughs> Pitchford. Randall Pitchford. The more uh, he's the more um, elegant version of Randy. <laughs> Just as bad though. Um, he's the one that's his that's his medieval times persona <laughs> hi I am, I am Duke, Randall. Duke Randall Pitchfordington <laughs> like why are you here again Randy Duke Randall does, you mean dost thou have a USB port for my child pornographer <laughs> company secrets and child porn uh <laughs> So we talked about Randy and his decision making uh, last last Blursey's episode. Um, at this point, Randy Pitchford is like the stereotypical villain in like a really like a James Bond movie. <laughs> right. Yes. He like you think he's normal when you just look at him and hear him talk. And then he like does this horribly shady stuff Turns out he's a real scumbag. That's that's who Randy Pitchford is. And this was the year where uh, he promised bonuses based on you know the profit sharing that they do at at their company, and he uh, pulled pulled people back on those because the company didn't meet the numbers that they were anticipating. 
so you guys aren't getting bonuses. And if you don't like it, you can leave in classic Bond villain fashion. He's like, you don't like it? You can get out of here. Right. And then they, as they leave out the door, they're like, all right, I'm going to leave. He pulls the lever and the floor drops out and they drop into a shark tank. I think I think that's what happened. But Randy Pitchford um, is a Bond villain. Peterson, it is eerie how close we were because his name is literally Randall Stewart Pitchford the <laughs> second. No, I only know this because he has a son. Randall Stewart Pitchford the third. Oh my gosh. <laughs> hear ye, hear ye. Sir Randall Pitchford the second has entered the arena. Oh he wants, a, he wants that turkey leg. Just give keep, me that dude, this give guy. me that turkey leg. Of oh he's you know the second. You know Randy Pitchford eats his shit at at uh <laughs> <laughs> at medieval times like Danathor just <laughs> drenching his chin with juices does not bother to wipe it off <laughs> at all that's for a peasant to do okay Aaron what is your nomination for least favorite character of 2020 my least favorite character is actually all of the characters from the Marvel Avengers because they're all just flat <laughs> Well, except for the men, uh, all the men are very, <laughs> very chesty. Yes, very, very, busty. very, <laughs> very <laughs> nipply. Um, and <laughs> well, I like guess Batman I guess forever. the Hulk, the Hulk, um, you know, Bruce Banner is actually pretty flat. It's, I mean, he has a flat ass, flat, flat chest. You know, it's not. He, nothing he's really, a science nerd. Yeah, nothing really to look at. Dork. You know, um, but when he hulks out, he is one top heavy boy. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you guys that. Okay. But Dunga, the characters Dunga. from Who this drew game. these guys? Who did their <laughs> models? We've talked about this, but they're like the off-brand version of these characters because we're so used to seeing. You know, we have what twenty Marvel movies, right from the MCU. We're used to seeing these characters <laughs> look good, not no, forty-eight-year-old, forty-eight-year-old like Captain America. It's like someone at Square Enix is like yells over the cubicle, "Hey, uh." Captain America has two rib cages, right? Like, oh yeah, I think he has two rib cages. Okay, yeah, that makes. He's got a little sense. bit of a double chin, and his hair is thinning on top. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, Captain that, America. That's Cap. Middle age. How did you know? Dad that's bod. Cap. You know, that's Cap. That's what everyone knows him as. Oh, Thor is wearing stonewashed jeans underneath his. Uh, <laughs> that's right. Underneath yeah. his Thor outfit, they're, they're, dude. They're like, Asgard how about Hulk? <laughs> <laughs> like, should we put should we put Hulk on the cover? They're like, who the fuck is Hulk? Oh, you mean Bruce Banner? Yeah, no, Bruce Banner's there. <laughs> Bruce Banner? Who are you talking about? Is this that guy with a button up? Yeah. Oh yeah, we put him on the cover of our superhero game. Oh, cool. Very good decision. Not Hulk. <laughs> You went Everyone with Bruce suited Banner up for the cover. And Bruce is sitting there Bruce with his tucked just, in shirt. Bruce is, his fist isn't even clenched. He's not even ready. He's not even halfway there. <laughs> he doesn't know what's happening right now. The guy, Bruce is not ready to fight. The guy has almost all of his buttons up. Let's just say that. <laughs> he's got all this, his t shirt is fully buttoned. <laughs> like, he's, uh, like the Hulk could not button that up. Um, okay, let's do let's move on to our next category Worst Sequel. All right, Aaron, what is your what is your nomination for Worst Sequel? Okay, so a, a lot of these sequels, I mean, they, they're all terrible. Let's, let's just be honest, all of the 2k game nonsense but mine is nba 2k 21 because i actually like 2k 20 because i bought 2k 21 because i really enjoyed 2k 20 and 2k 21 is basically 2k 20 and i was (laughs) it's the same game it was actually worse i don't know how (laughs) they made it worse but yeah because it was a copy paste of 2k 20 uh, which was a copy paste of 2K19, <laughs> and so there, and then they just right. added a couple extra right. things, and I, they, they don't fix the code or yes. redo the code. They're just trying to add extra code on top of last <laughs> year's. Well, and code. they fooled you because it was actually meant to be for PlayStation Five, but no, it was they. <clears throat> 
put it out for PlayStation 4, and they basically just copied all of the graphics, everything, just updated the roster, inputted the new barely their story i don't know i don't even remember what it was uh it's stupid it's just a money grab you know be ashamed <laughs> of yourselves 2k um yeah it is it is look 2k might always make the list they just have not done this correctly dude we're doing the yet. same thing they're doing I'm pretty sure we nominated them. Let's let's see. Let's let's we just copy look. pasted the nomination. Two K two zero. There it is. Worst <laughs> sequel. We nominated it last year. It got twenty two percent of the votes. Guys, we're doing the same shit uh, they did. I, I love that. It, I love that we're just recycling our nomination. Yeah. Guess what? A holes. You'll get another blursty nom next year. You guys are just lying in your trophy case. They're like, this is the easiest blursty ever. I bet that no one knew that they could just sit <laughs> back and not do anything and they'd get a blursty. Um, Peterson, will you hit this? We got to talk about this. Okay. We haven't talked about this at all. We haven't talked this about this This is a crazy surprise blursty. And honestly, honestly, we this was not even on our radar. Okay? So we just found out like a couple weeks, a few weeks ago. It's one of those 2020 surprises. Absolutely. Twenty twenty surprise. surprise turd, and you're like, uh <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Another one. Uh, if the <laughs> if, as if as if the year could get any worse. Ernest Klein said, "Yes, I can make it worse," and he <laughs> released Ready Player Two. Okay, the book. So Ready which, Player which the One. The title alone sounds like a parody, dude. Uh, Ready Player Two, obviously, because <laughs> it's the second one. And uh, is it is it because there's a second player? No, same yeah. guy. The only the only way this could have been worse is if it was Ready Player T O O. Ready Player One Two? Question mark. Oh my gosh! Question mark in the title. <laughs> yes. Dude, dude, Ready Player Early Access is going to be the prequel. I'm calling it right now. Hot prediction from Peterson, Ready Player Early Access. Yeah, I, did, I didn't even it. realize. So I heard that Ready Player 2 was was coming out in, in the future. I didn't even realize this release two months ago. I had yep. no idea. Dude, here's why. Here's why. The book is a uh, 2020 dump as jd mentioned it is not good i have not read it yet i fully plan to but have uh, you but... read any of the excerpts online yes so guys oh. these excerpts are so bad that they are so good jd and i well they were so we... bad that they were suing to get them removed from the internet where people, people were posting, were posting them. just excerpts not oh, even shit. like spoilers or nope. like full chapters just it like, would a, be like, like a paragraph one or two. to two paragraphs and they were getting them pulled off because people were making so much fun of them. It's bad, you guys. The story, A, is what's happening? Oh, guess what? There's another one. There's another treasure hunt in the Oasis. Surprise, surprise. Right? So it's not even an original story. They just do another another treasure hunt. And, oh, my goodness. Some of these some of these excerpts are just if you thought ready player one was chock full of references <laughs> ready player two i think we read one paragraph and there was like eight or nine references in the they're one not even paragraph. being subtle anymore like the first one it was no. like oh this guy was obsessed with all this 80s culture so much so that he like program this entire this entire thing around it now it's just like shameless like they so, don't even yeah. care anymore listen, they just like listen. go ahead i'm gonna i'm gonna do a paragraph for you real quick it's so bad he just puts them in nonsensically He's, okay this is from the book i opened my eyes i must be back in the stacks this isn't anything like my house in vista i thought it was pitch black like su like subspace in super mario bros 2 which was called <laughs> super mario usa in japan but originally released as doki doki panic because the real super mario bros 2 was deemed too hard for american gamers dude that's please the stop. wikipedia please fucking stop oh my god why did they go into that I Hated it, that. It wasn't even like a, oh, this must be a clue. Like the first one would be like, oh, this was a clue because Super no. Mario USA. Nope. He's just, this is just, uh, this is just them talking. 
This is just like thought process. And you're like, why are you giving us the Wikipedia article for Super Mario Bros. 2? What? what because. So because. Dumb. And that happened because it was dark. And he goes into four lines of Super Mario 2 uh, backstory. Like, what? This it, It's all like this, guys. Really. I can't. JD and I are planning on reading it. We got to talk about it on the show or something because this is wild. So, yeah, I I would love to do an audio book of this. I don't know if that's <laughs> legal. I don't oh, think so. Man. Um, but holy god. So, Ready Player 2, worst sequel. You guys are got to this is I just feel bad for this Blursty nomination. Honestly, I feel like we have not done it justice uh by not talking on the show because we were like this just it just fell in our lap. And we had no idea what to do with it. It was just gold. And so you guys really need to go out there and do the research for yourselves. <laughs> you got you. You will not and see it. if you can find any excerpts. Hell, uh, someone has actually updated the plot summary on Wikipedia. So honestly, just reading that alone will probably make you leave like a bad taste in your mouth, especially if you enjoyed the first one. If you didn't enjoy the first one, you'll hate this worse. If you did enjoy the first one, you'll also hate it. So it's a book for everyone. <laughs> um so uh let's see oh so my nomination for worst sequel is battle toads i know it's surprising uh this this category is kind of hard sometimes um not for our next not for our next nominator but i i feel like <laughs> there's not always a lot of n- bad sequels out that are like so bad that i'd say like worst sequel Battletoads was kind of borderline. Battletoads was definitely borderline. The reason I felt comfortable nominating it, though, is because after we waited for 20 years for... Ah, that's kind of inaccurate. Nobody was waiting for this. No one's like, oh, I hope they bring back Battletoads. Nobody was clamoring for this. But they brought it back 20 years later anyway. And we were uh, like, oh, cool. That'll we're be like, cool. Oh, sweet. Right? And then they put it on Xbox Games Pass. So it's like, oh, it's pretty much free, reasonable price for anyone that wants to play it. Um, you know, it's got all these things going for it, but here's the two problems I had with it. First of all, the lack of online play in 2020, I get it. So they were trying to emulate the arcade, yeah, the you arcade machine. Go back to their roots, right? The machine itself, I believe, was three player. It had three sticks or whatever you could play with. So they were emulating that being like, oh, well, you can play it, you know, three player side by side, uh, co-op, which is interesting. It's cool. It's quirky. But man, look, it came out like August or some shit. Like you guys had five months of coronavirus to realize that there is not going to be a lot of opportunities for people to play this couch co-op unless they have their co-op partners living with them already. And they still did it. And I think that's crazy. Uh, The game itself was not that great. Beyond that, like the game wasn't that great. So I think it'd be fun for nostalgia. And you know why Peterson and I played Double Dragon Neon? It was not because it's like the most stellar game. Oh, wait, was that what we played? What was the other? No, no, no. We, we played, played Streets Del- of Rage 4. Streets of Rage 4. Not because it was like a stellar, outstanding beat em up, but because it was co op, it was online, and it was there, and we got to play it together. And we had fun with we it. We had a blast. But, and here's the thing we played that game. We played we Battletoads. We, so I played Battletoads, and JD played Battletoads separately because we couldn't play it together. Ugh. <clears throat> and here's the thing. Uh, Streets of Rage 4, the levels were pretty quick, fairly beatable, right? If you died, you were like, oh, whatever. Battletoads had that. It had the beat em up aspect of it, but then it had lots of little mini games you would get into where you were riding the speeder, and it became just a memorization game because Mm -hmm. uh, some of your reaction times would have to be so fast, you'd have to just play it enough times till you memorized it. And which that's fine. Okay, that's fine. But they were like, I, I'm not kidding. I'm not exaggerating. They were two and a half times longer than you thought it should be. So you'd think you would be done. You'd be like, I got it. And then it would kick in some more. And you're like, are you kidding me? And then you'd say, oh, I'm, I, I've, I've, okay, now we're done. And then it kicked back in just for one more little, one more little stretch. And all of those hard parts, that were not necessarily fun because they were just memorization. They weren't rewarding. Were were, were just memor- memorization games. They weren't, you know, you couldn't just power your button mash your way through like you do with a fighter with a beat em up. Yeah. 
yeah so <clears throat> disappointing sequel uh to a game that no one was really waiting for so it was kind of a letdown out of nowhere like perfect 2020 <laughs> Thanks, thing oh thank you so much for we for letting that's us a, that's down a good 2020 move. We they're like want. hey you know the year's going pretty bad i'm like yeah they're like remember battletoads yeah yeah it's back we did it yay that's yay. cool oh so here's battletoads yeah it sucks Oh, I can't play with your friends. <laughs> Why? Just cause, huh? We well, didn't want to. There's Battletoads 2020 out. But Fuck I don't want to play with my friends. No. Um. All right. So here's our last nomination for worst sequel. This one comes to us from Christopher. Good evening, three big gamers. My name's Christopher, the boss level patron, and my nomination for the worst of 2020 is Doom Eternal. Now, with Doom Eternal being the sequel uh, to the original, to the 2016 Doom, I have to say it seems like it's just a reskin with a rework of the game mechanics, including the chainsaw, the adding of the flamethrower, and pretty much just a rework of all the levels and some more lore. And a another boss that is just ridiculously hard to beat and is no more fun than the last game. Uh, so, yeah, that is my nomination for the worst sequel, Doom Eternal. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> if there's one thing I know about Christopher, it's if that Christopher hates, hates Doom Eternal. <laughs> just today, while we're recording this, he had a a rant on our Discord channel about how he he did not like the music, the score, the score for Doom sucks. Eternal because it won uh, best soundtrack <laughs> on the Steam Awards, and he had, went on a rant. And then his voice message is uh, about how uh, Doom Eternal is the worst sequel of the year. Christopher doesn't like Doom Eternal, guys. He didn't like it. Actually, I think all of his reasons are legit. Do I think it was a bad game? No, but it was a samey game. You know, nothing nothing new or nothing yeah. interesting uh, compared to the previous installment of the Doom franchise. Which, to be... So here's the, here's a thing is I can't really disagree with this or, or debate it because I didn't play the first one. So I only played Doom Eternal. I was stoked. So maybe anyone that just played this one is like, cool. But yeah, it, it, it from what I read, it was very much the same kind of it was a uh, Christopher pretty heavily. JD's calling you out. He oh, wants to do no, a no, live no, no, Discord no, no, debate. No, no, I don't like it that much. About I don't like it that much. It's, it's fine. It sucks. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, let's take a let's take a little break. This week's intermission brought to you by Kudos, the healthy way to eat candy. Also by Crave Cookies, the most crave tastic cookie you'll ever eat. All right, kudos is our positivity segment. Psych. It's our negativity segment. Go to cravecookies.com or don't. Screw you. It's negativity time. All right. Uh, <laughs> normally we do something uplifting and uh, cheery, but it's the blursties, so we're going negative on our kudos. And you guys, I have a, a very strange kudos or pudos. I'm sorry, a pudos this week. Don't get a lot of opportunities to talk about stuff like this. Um, <laughs> so I was selling a uh, uh, bed, an old Ikea bed, and it's in great condition on KSL, which is like the Utah equivalent of Craigslist. And uh, this guy texts me. And so I take this. I disassemble this bed. It's Ikea. It breaks down into like eight pieces and like 20 screws. This thing is... Um, for an Ikea bed, it's really simple. Uh, it took me less than two minutes to take the whole thing down to nothing. So uh, I thought I was being nice by breaking this down, putting it in a nice little pile, taking a picture of it and posting it on KSL. Uh, turns out, no, because the first guy that comes over, he comes over and he texts me and I was like really stoked. And I asked him to wear a mask and he said he would. So I was like, OK, cool. We're off to a great start. So he comes to the door and it's him. He's like a middle-aged dude, maybe, maybe a bit younger. And then his son, 
who I assume was moving out, but he looked like 14. His name was Max. Uh, that has no bearing on the story, but I don't know why his he felt the need to introduce me to him and his son. Uh, I was like, bitch, I just want to sell you this bed and get you out of my house. Um, so he comes in because I'm an idiot. And I should have put the bed outside, which I learned from this guy. This guy taught me many valuable lessons, Max's dad. Uh, he comes in and he looks at it. And Wait, I tell, you don't know the dad's name? Just no, Max? Just the kid? No. Right. I don't know why it just stuck out to me. Max. Max, Max and Max's, Max's dad. Because he looked, he looked about the age of his name. Um, <laughs> okay. Because I don't think you can be named Max and be age past 15. Um, <laughs> sorry to any of our Max listeners out there. You have found the fountain of youth. Um, so Max and his grow dad up. Are, <laughs> grow up. Why Max. are you calling yourself Max still? You have to go by Maximilian That's when my you get name. older. Um, so Max and his dad come into my house. They look at this bed. Long story short, he's like, no, I can't build this bed. And I was like, oh, it's really easy. I could. I mean, I don't know. I, there's Ikea instructions online. There's like a PDF. It's two pages long. And he's like, ah, I don't know. What do you think, Max? Max is like, mm, what? Mm, mm. And these guys are just like in my house, in my space. Again, my mistake. My bad. Shouldn't have invited them in. Uh, but they're just like hemming and hawing over this before eventually the guy's like, he turns to Max. He goes, Max, I'll be honest with you, bud. I'm not really good with this sh- kind of shit. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> what? I Max suck goes, as a dad. Max. Yeah. And Max turns to his dad. He goes, and, he, and he, he nods sagely and goes, yeah, me neither, dad. What is happening? Well, of course you're not good at it. Clearly, your dad's too incompetent to put together <laughs> IKEA furniture. Good God! So I'm like, wow, this is. I'm like, okay, good. Get out, get out, get out, get out, get out. Like, get out of my fucking house. This is great. This is weird. Turns to me, goes, hey man. So we've been driving around. Like, is it okay? I, I gotta. And I'm like, what is he? What the fuck is going with this? What is he going? So I I really gotta go to the bathroom. Can I just like? go in your backyard and like pee in your backyard or something. What the like, shit? He said that? Yes. 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 <laughs> oh my God. Yes. What? <laughs> Good thing I'm wearing a mask because my jaw is on the floor. Like you. <laughs> Can I pee in your back? Are, are you insane? <laughs> like what are you at? I said, no, man. I like, I'm now stuck. I think he, it was like fucking with me because instinctively it was like a really high, when you go really high on a barter and the person responds with a number higher than they had expected because your number was so high. And I was like, oh no, dude, go use my bathroom. I was like, total stranger, just like go fuck around in my space because the thing you just suggested was so off putting and horrifying. Was so wild. I can't even do anything but consider alternatives. So uh, dude, this guy he goes, asked to pee in your backyard. Dude, this guy goes so to the just bathroom to set while, the record his, while Max just lingers in my house, and I'm like, "What is happening?" That's they live there the now. Cops and let they him live pee there in now. Your backyard and say, "There's this dude exposing." There's a crazy to guy peeing in my backyard. <laughs> just lock the door. The fence is locked. He's like trapped. I'm like, I've trapped him, officer. You'll have to get this rogue peer and his son Max out of my place. So, I, the, just the balls on this guy. Yes. Can you imagine asking? Well, his balls were full. Stranger. That's why he needed to use my backyard so bad. <laughs> Wait, are you suggesting that pee is stored yes. in the balls? Yes, Peter said I, that's exactly what I'm saying. That's what Max told me. His dad told him. So <laughs> the worst building stuff. Look, his man, balls are full. In 2020, by design, I have had precious few interactions with other humans uh this was unfortunately one of them and it is by far the worst of the whole year normally you wouldn't be able to say that this year i remember all the interactions i've had with strangers they're about five and one of them features a dude requesting to urinate in my yard (laughs) get out of here max take your fucking weird dad with you Jesus. <laughs> that, that is that the weirdest. 2020, he's out. Got, he's he's got to be registered, man. <sighs> oh, so. my gosh. Incredible. <clears throat> Does anyone That's else have Pudos? Where, where are I, I, we right now? What? <laughs> Pudos. We're in the backyard. Oh, okay. peeing. We're just peeing in JD's backyard. 
No <laughs> big deal. Drop it. Drop right and try. Now. Here's the thing. I guarantee you. <laughs> this guy 100%. pees with his pants around his ankle. Yes. For <laughs> sure. It, that's what I was going to say. The <laughs> if, you're, if you're violating one social contract, why stop there? <laughs> he why? Drops his pants are around his ankles, <laughs> butt hanging out as he pees. I promise you. <laughs> uh, I, there's no question in my mind. God, dude. I can't. Dude, I, have lost I just, their goddamn mind. And I just, think, yeah, yeah. That's the thing is, everyone's just going cuckoo and forgotten like how to interact with each other. Like, friend, <laughs> this is not how we interact with each other. I know we're not getting a lot of practice right now, but I feel like this one thing you probably got to remember. remember that one thing. It hasn't been that long. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I've forgotten all rules. I didn't. I, I didn't. I didn't flush the toilet in there. Didn't wash my hands. Peed all Hell, over the toilet seat. Peed <laughs> all over the oh. seat. And when I leave your house, I am not going to close the door behind me. I don't I, know how to do that anymore. I def dropped some pubes on the toilet seat. <laughs> door was wide open as I peed. Sprinkle. Oh my gosh, dude, this is incredible. I hate humans. Okay, does anyone else have any pudos? Yes, I can't match this, but I do have a pudos. <laughs> We should have done yours last. It's too good. Uh, okay, so I watched a show on Netflix. It was in the top, right? The top 10 or whatever most viewed shows. Uh, I'd seen a trailer for it. I love space stuff. I loved The Martian so much. So naturally, the movie Midnight Sky, starring George Clooney, looked uh, interesting to me. The Clooney's. And directed by George Clooney, is it right? Oh, well, I don't know. Troubling. Was it? Oh. Uh, he didn't do a good job. Yes, he did. He was directed. Obviously, this is the Pudos segment, so you know I didn't like it. So George, yes, he did he did direct it. So George Clooney in this movie. I'm gonna give you all sorts of spoilers because I'm telling you not to watch it. It's not good. I mean, look at the scores. Just Google it right now. Look at the scores. It's, they're terrible. Um, so George Clooney is first of all, no explanation. It starts off, everyone is getting evacuated from um, some sort of facility in the tundra, the snowy tundra, which you assume is like Antarctica or something. Some Arctic tundra. <clears throat> George Clooney stays behind by himself. He's the last one at the facility. Um, and his goal is to contact uh, space missions. So you're piecing this together as you go. It does not give you any exposition. What you find out is that Earth is... Uh, we've destroyed the earth, right? We've destroyed it. It's, it's unlivable. Uh, and so we spent a, sent a bunch of space missions out to find new planets to inhabit. Well, they found one. They found one planet that can work. Uh, and they're on their way back. All of the other space exploration missions are, are the, he can't contact them, but he contacts this one. They finally start talking it is, uh, first off, it is a space exploration movie with no space exploration. You don't get to see Perfect. the planet for more than 15 Perfect. seconds. Right, Dude. yeah. <clears throat> it's a space station and a, uh, and a weather station in the Arctic. That's, Dude, that's, the... that's exactly how the Asylum does all their movies. Oh, Just gosh, inside this... sets and then the outside shots for setup are like maybe five seconds long. Yes. Just establishing that's... shots establishing and then everything is predictable in this it's supposed to be emotional there's like things that's supposed to happen that are supposed to be riveting and emotional Clooney gets hurt Clooney's addicted to drugs he's got some health condition the people uh up in the I mean you could probably tell me what happens the people on the space station that's traveling back to earth uh have to deviate course someone dies someone gets hurt Right. Uh, all this all the stuff happens. He has to move to a, a different weather station, you know, five kilometers away. And uh, of course, the, the a blizzard comes while he's doing that. Right. Everything that you've seen in these types of movies happens. There's nothing original in it. Uh, the acting was fine. Honestly, the, everything looked fine. Actually, the set design was I even usually I don't pay attention that much to that. But I noticed it. I was like, oh, that's interesting. It looks pretty cool. Everything looked cool and nothing cool happened. It looked like so many cool things were going to happen and none of it did. Uh, it wasn't interesting. You knew the big twist at the ending. 
30 minutes into the movie. Uh, I'm not even exaggerating. You already knew what it was going to be. And then when no. it happens, you're like, yeah, I, none of those were surprising to me. Don't there's build two, around a shitty twist. There's two twists. Neither of them are unpredictable. Right. You knew they were going to happen immediately. Uh, it's it, look just it wasn't good. It wasn't interesting. It was only in the top. In the top ten for of Netflix because it was new and Clooney was in it. Otherwise, guys, just if you haven't watched it, if you put it on your watch list, take it off. It's honestly not worth it. It only the only thing it made me want to do is watch The Martian again. I was like, you know what? That movie didn't scratch any itches. I'm just going to watch The Martian now. So yep. don't watch Midnight Sky. Just go watch The Martian again because it's yep. always good. So and good, never streaming anymore. So annoying. Um, yeah, because you always want to watch. That's a good background movie. Um, okay, well, let's uh, get back into the show. Worst name. Okay, I'm just gonna kick this one off because it's just such a gimme. Uh, they get they handed this to us <laughs> just on uh, a silver platter. <laughs> new world. New world. That is Amazon's. Uh, plan to take on the MMO genre. This is announced. We don't know anything about it, right, Peterson? Other than uh, the name? Uh, we know it wasn't supposed to be in a fantasy setting, and then now it is. Uh, right. Supposedly. He, so, JD, JD and I were like, how did this happen? How did you come up with a game and name it New World? That's it. Arrogance. Uh, no, there's only one explanation. The CEO, whatever, what's uh, Bezos, right? Isn't he yeah. the Amazon guy? Bezos was like, guys, you know what? You know Some what? You know what game? You know what game is making a ton of money? World of Warcraft. So we're <laughs> going to make new World of Warcraft. And like uh, his lawyers chime in. I don't think you can call it that. And he's like, let me ask you a question. You've heard of Mexico, right? Yeah, you've heard of New Mexico, right? Are they the same thing? Would you say Mexico and New Mexico are the same thing? Well, no, not exactly. Would you say York and New York are the same thing? No. Uh, yeah, so it's not the same. We're making New World of Warcraft. Until yeah. Mexico comes forward with a <laughs> lawsuit <laughs> levied against New Mexico, we are we are going with New World. There's Look, no precedent. We cut out, we cut out of Warcraft. What more do you want? God, yeah. all those lawyers I was chomping at my ass. So now it's just New World, and it is uh, probably a World of Warcraft clone. But guys, New World is the worst, most generic name. So dumb that I can I can think of. How could you make a more generic name of a game that's not like video game? Rage. That's it. Oh, I. <laughs> Dude, it's just low effort. It's lazy. I. But then again, it, I get. I don't know. Amazon is lazy when it comes to naming stuff. As they're lazy in in all later. aspects of making their games. To be fair, there is no point at which they're <laughs> not true. cutting corners or um, taking any good advice. Dude, I don't think they. I don't think they do any like uh, roundtable discussions or anything like that. Open forums with anyone on any of these decisions. Dude, this is a. I know this is a weird tangent, but I'm just going to go down. I was reading um, about customer satisfaction at fang companies and larger tech companies, um, and employees at Microsoft, for example, were cited as being very happy. Now, obviously, they're working for a gigantic corporation. So any of those complaints that you might have about working for a huge corporation like that or an organization, those those aside, the people are very happy with the compensation, with the mm -hmm. PTO they have. I'm sure, Peterson, you have some mm -hmm. lifers at Boeing that are like really stoked about the they've got a good cushy job. Yeah. When I lived in Seattle, I knew lots of people that worked at Microsoft and they stoked. loved it. Yeah, they loved and it. So you look at Xbox and you're like, oh, well, of course, Xbox does really well. And Games Pass is great. They have Microsoft and all their money. Yeah, that's sure. That's one thing. But that's not everything, because obviously it's not working for Amazon. They have more money than God. The thing is, is treating your employees right was Jeff Bezos is like categorically unable to do. 
Like <laughs> he can't run his company if it's not like if it doesn't have some foundations rooted in he- cruelty against humanity in general. <laughs> Jeff Bezos is like, I can't do it. If people haven't suffered, what's this all been about? <laughs> But the people at Microsoft that do great things and yeah, I mean, the the dumb things aside in general, Xbox is really great. The the products they they produce are really great. The games they produce and I don't mean develop the just the ones they produce and publish do really well and they do a good job. Now, why can't Amazon put it together? All you need to do is look at their glass door page. People fucking hate working at Amazon. Amazon doesn't even pay well. So yep. they treat you like shit. They don't pay well. And they don't produce anything that, worthy of having on a resume. Who would work there? The people knew, who would name a game New, New World. World. <laughs> I knew lots of people that worked at Amazon as well because they were also in Seattle. And I all of them hated it. Look, I know these are small sample sizes. But I'm not yeah. exaggerating. Every single person I knew that worked at Amazon hated it. And every person I knew that worked at Microsoft loved it so much. So, I mean, yeah, that's got to be something. There. That's the answer to that is you you make it so appealing to work there because guess what? Microsoft doesn't get the most creative people. They don't. Those guys are all making those people are making indie games. Mm-hmm. But Microsoft gets really talented people because they attract them with a crap ton of money. Um, okay, let's not waste any more time. Let's move on to our next nomination for worst name from Phil. Hey there, JD Peterson, and maybe a guest host. I don't know. You don't keep me in the loop about these things. Phil, your favorite bitty here with a 2020 Blurst nomination for the category of Blurst name. Originally, I chose this category because I knew what game I wanted to nominate. Unfortunately, while this game was originally slated to release in the winter of 2020, it got pushed back to the end of January 2021, so I can't officially nominate it. Maybe next year. There was no shortage of games released in 2020, and certainly no shortage of games with terrible names. A couple honorable mentions are Off-Road Racing Buggy X ATV X Moto, released this year for the Nintendo <laughs> Switch, as well as Tokyo Mirage Sessions hashtag FE Encore. Maybe that's a musical sharp symbol. I don't know. I'm no music sis. While those are bad, I don't think they hold a candle to my official nomination for this year's Blurst Name category, which is under night in birth exe colon late open bracket cl dash r close bracket i don't know what they were thinking of this one it's just awful interestingly enough it was actually nominated for best fighting game in this year's game awards but clearly they were gunning for the blursty in the name category Dude. Okay, That's first so of all, good. that is so good. <laughs> all of our listeners have such good radio voices. I yeah, just love do. it. This is my favorite. You guys are wonderful. And also, Phil, listen, I think you are a music cyst. <laughs> <laughs> um, I loved that. I loved his honor. Phil, you stole one of our honorable mentions, and I love that. For real, so you did. <laughs> um, under night in dash birth, exe colon late. Bracket CL dash R bracket. I don't what even know what that means or how to say that. Damn it. We were just talking, oh, Phil. Man. You stole the bet. We didn't steal it. We didn't even have this on our radar. Like yep. you just dropped this and it is oh so amazing. This is it, a in fact when I listened to me. Phil's nomination, I was like, I have to look this game up because I have no I have idea what he's saying. And it's all in caps. That's the <laughs> best part. Under night in birth or in Dash birth. I don't that's even all like that caps. part of it. In birth and is horrible. Yeah, and then ugh. it's dirty. It's it's I so know. bad. Ugh. Night E-X-E in birth. Late CLR. Ah, dude, in so birth. bad. In I don't know what that means. And in birth is when you grow the baby inside of you. <laughs> oh, oh. As opposed to an out. Why is this a fighting game? <laughs> Is this a fetus an fighting game? An outbirth <laughs> is what they call. Uh, what is that game? <laughs> Death Stranding. That's an outbirth. <laughs> this one is an inbirth. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, that's so great. You guys are having a traditional inbirth? Um, okay. Shut your Let's... mouth. <laughs> Shut your mouth. Just slap Aaron, Aaron, do uh, oh. let's hear your worst name nomination. Uh, so my worst name nom- nomination is Blizz Kline. Bl- Bliz Ka- <laughs> Wait, Ka- say that again. Kline? Blizz, Blizzco 
Online. Blizzcon line. Blizzcon line. Uh, yeah, it, I think just just stop it. Well, like I don't. Of all the names in the world, just just call it Blizzcon online. Or BlizzCon right. Live, or Blizz BlizzCon Live. That's what you call it, right there. That's that, I know what you were trying to do. Listen, Blizzard. I know what you were trying to do, but BlizzCon is is in every gamer's vocabulary. We all know that, and it and it's a clever wordplay on paper, right? It's very clever. But when you say it, BlizzCon Line, first of all, you've ruined your brand because it's BlizzCon. Right? That's how you say it. BlizzCon. Now you're saying BlizzCon line. You've moved where the emphasis on the word is. It doesn't sound the same. It sounds awkward. It's awkward to say. It's awkward to hear. Ah, the, man. Yeah. I just I, I don't like this department's at all. department's just got to be fired. Just all of them. I, Just can't. They were giving themselves high fives. Someone was like, guys, guys, guys. Dude, BlizzCon. You online. guys, I have to BlizzCon admit, line. I just fully disagree with both of you. I was that guy. A pair, I would have been that guy at Blizzard who like stunk my whole reputation on naming this BlizzCon line because I couldn't <laughs> resist how funny it was that I pushed the words together. I do this at work all the time. I just and like die on these it. hills that everyone's like, why are you dying on this hill? I don't even want to go near that hill, JD. And I'm like, eh, I'm dying here. This is what's happening. I want it to say BlizzCon line and I will literally quit if it doesn't say that. They're yeah. like, please quit. They, then we won't have to lay you <laughs> off. That's a win-win. It'll help JD. our layoff like, numbers. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're laying <laughs> okay, off a third. Well, then guess of the what? Here anyway. goes. Now I'm not going to quit unless you call it BlizzCon Live. Dang it! <laughs> I love BlizzCon this Live. This is Dunder Mifflin so Infinity. Why don't you just push the words together, Dunder Mifflin? <laughs> Dude, <laughs> Peter said, I can't wait. Just do it. Do your nomination for worst name. <laughs> okay. My nomination <laughs> is my favorite. Of It's been my favorite since I heard this. Uh, Ubisoft has a guy who got in trouble for uh, sexual misconduct, I believe. His name is Max Bellend. Now, listen, he's French. I know that's not how he pronounces it, right? I, I know it's not. But when I read it on paper... His name is Max Bellend. If you are unfamiliar, I'm going to get real explicit. The Bellend is the tip of a penis in British slang. (laughs) (laughs) Max Bellend. Dude, I cannot get enough. This guy, I don't know if this is worst name or best name, because this is like, uh, this is what I'm naming my cyberpunk character. Guys, the huge penis Max cyberpunk character Bellin. is Max it Bellin. It can't be huge, <laughs> Peterson. We already talked about that. Yeah, you get two the larger than average penis size. It can only be size. average or, or something else, and there's no robot options. You can't carve Mount Rushmore into your pubes. Like, There's nothing to do in this game. All my dreams are crushed. God, uh, damn it. <laughs> dude, Max Bellend, worst name because he's named after a penis, and... And double kudos, <laughs> double kudos. His name is Max, and he's a full-grown adult. Come on. Oh, Come on. I forgot about that. He's a full-grown adult yes. named Max. And uh, unlike most people, he's chosen to oh, uh, live his life according to his name. <laughs> he is a dickhead. He's and like, so... I'm going to be a huge dickhead my whole fucking life. That's how I was born and named, and that's what I'm going to do. I just want to. I don't my even dad know why. Max. <laughs> It didn't teach me how to do anything. Not even use a screwdriver. It's just a screwdriver. It's a screwdriver, Max. You turn it to the right. You you poke it into the metal thing and you turn it to the right twice. Come on, Max. You can do this, buddy. Then he visited Ah. England one time and just got bullied relentlessly. And he knew from then on. Dude, Max 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 goes in the backyard. He goes out with his dad and just forgets to zip his <laughs> pants down. Just pees. He He's like, oh, I've never been really good at these kind of things, dad. He's like, that's okay, son. I'm standing here, pants zipped up, piddling on myself, too. <laughs> pants pants around my ankles. <laughs> just, <laughs> like, just, just like a little kid. <laughs> this guy goes in the back, my backyard and just stands there as he wets himself quietly. Maybe that was no way this guy misconduct. knows how to unzip his pants. <laughs> incompetent piece of shit okay so worst name you guys was this category was so fantastic this year usually we struggle with it we had 
no, honorable mentions. We have too many. We have too many. So we and we, Peterson and I were trying to narrow these down, and we literally could not delete these. We couldn't bear to part with them. So here's the <laughs> no. deal: we are going to read out these nominations for or, our honorable mentions, and we will include these in the voting. And then if if there, we will have a runoff election. If if you guys think these honorable mentions uh, in total are better than the other options that we have, then we will have oh, a man. runoff with all the options. Um, okay, so our honorable mentions for worst name uh, are, as Phil already mentioned, Tokyo Mirage Sessions uh, F Sharp E E. F-E sharp or pound F-E or hashtag F-E. I don't know. I don't um, know. I mean, I get. I guess. Why is that in the name? Pound F sharp E? I don't know. Guys, I don't know. I don't know um, what this is. That's why it's an honorable mention. Yeah, so that one. And then Prime Gaming. This is what uh, <laughs> Jeff Bezos decided uh, that he wants to call Twitch. Okay, because Twitch is not a recognizable brand, but Prime no. is. Uh, and so uh, they're going to rebrand Twitch, which, listen, every gamer knows Sorry. Twitch. Mm. When we, no. by the way, when Aaron, when we pulled Aaron on and we were like, hey, look, we've got Prime Gaming on there. You can choose that if you want. What's and he Prime was like, gaming? what's Prime Gaming? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> what is that? You've heard of Twitch. You know what Dude, Twitch it is. Dude, even, it doesn't even match if they're like, okay, well, no. these are our different brands. So this is. Prime Video is our video streaming service. Oh, so is Prime Gaming your gaming streaming service? Well, no. no, no, no I mean, no, no. it's Twitch, so people stream their games. So you watch them. Oh, it's oh. Twitch. Oh, it's Twitch. Yeah. Oh. No, 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 no. It's Prime Gaming now, though. It's Prime Gaming. Because not a lot of people Oops. know that Amazon owns Twitch. No. So... Y- yeah. oh, they they're want gonna, you to know. That's exactly why they're doing this, Aaron, because not enough people had 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 given their like attention to Jeff Bezos who just drinks it like blood. Anyway, um the other honorable mention we have is Re Zero Starting Life in Another World The Prophecy of the Throne. Okay. Hold and on. That's not three you nominations, friends. What, what is the subtitle? <laughs> What's the title? What's the, the whole second thing title? Is the subtitle, Aaron. I don't three, it, uh, title? it's whole thing. Re colon Zero, All caps. dash, starting life in another world, dash, the prophecy of the throne. The, okay, that's too this many is words. Crazy. First of all, that is too many words. Sometimes and some of them make no sense. That's <laughs> sometimes I wonder how these how these translate differently. I've always been curious because uh, you know Japanese characters use like can be like a whole word or or a sentence yeah yeah um i always thought they got a they got a score on twitter like well, <laughs> twitter is a totally different experience for japanese people like you could yeah. write like a book on there but um i i wonder if like this was like you know two elegant little characters on the game art and it was awesome and looked cool but then they're like let's translate this straight across and everyone's like oh no so starting life in another world is like more of a concept that it's really hard to translate. They're like, ah, just translate it literally. It's fine. <laughs> oh. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. Again, this is all speculation. I don't even know if this game is Japanese, but. We, we uh, don't know. We're assuming because <laughs> Japanese games do this. Are very often titled like this. There's obviously something I'm missing. Like I something I don't know. Or like, is it a coding thing? We'll prepare I for a seven hour cutscene for you to understand. So and maybe they, that's what happened with the the bracket CL dash R bracket was a missing <laughs> character just that just didn't translate over. They just couldn't find like a clip art, so they're just like, eh, that's fine. Dude, it's just it's like the, the, it's the code. It's like when you get a, a a manual for some something you've bought that was obviously made in China and they've translated it to English, and it is like indecipherable what they're trying to say. Maybe that's what's happening. They didn't know. They their translator guy was like, I don't know. I'm just gonna leave this. I think maybe that's English then. Exe colon late bracket yeah, cl dash r bracket. Yeah, obviously that, that's, that seems yeah. fine. He's like, they name things so weird in English. <laughs> you put the exe file in the title. What the shit? <laughs> it's okay. And no one's last, gonna notice. 
the last honorable mention I couldn't go without. I could not delete it. <laughs> it is a game called Warface. I look. I just love this because that is the stupidest name I can War think face. of. That's what I would have named Everybody my. Everybody put on your war face. <laughs> That's what I would have named my D and D character when I was twelve years old. <laughs> oh, you know what sounds cool? I don't know, like Spike Ball or Warface. Like that's what it is to me. Warface is. It sounds like a joke, and that's what the game is called. Warface. <laughs> War and then literally any body part after it sounds like a joke. War nuts. <laughs> Everyone grab your war fist. Wait, that one sounds fucking sick. War yeah, fist war... would have been a cool title. War fist would have been great. War face. War fist? <laughs> has that been has that been t- trademarked? We're gonna start calling this the war Bellin fist face. podcast. Um, War Bellin. <laughs> Max is like, wait, Bellin. I like this. Warfist oh, is, is a musical group, a Polish musical group. Black metal, obviously. That's the tightest thing ever. That's the tightest name ever. Uh, all right, let's move on to our next our final category. Worst decision. Got to go ahead and we just got to spin this. This is one of my favorite recordings we got. This is from... Agrilord, his nomination for Worst Decision. Kia ora, Agrilord here, all the way from New Zealand, with a blursty nomination for the Worst Decision of 2020. And in my opinion, it goes to a small indie company called Riot Games and their decision to cancel the Oceania Professional League, seemingly out of the blue, and just days after their best ever showing at Worlds. I love this. I love this accent. I love it so much. Look, I new love requirement. We... You are not allowed to listen to the show unless you send us one voicemail a week, Lord, <laughs> because your voice and your accent is the best thing that's happened to me in in a month. I loved it so much, dude. We're going international. We've got we've got Canada. We've got New Zealand. We're all over, man. This is. This also, I knees. don't even know what the first word he says when he in in his voicemail. I don't know what it is, but it sounds cooler than anything I've ever said. I don't know what he says. Jutta? Kyoto? I, I don't know, know. but it, it's sounds cooler badass. than anything I've said sounds in like three cool, years anything, of the podcast. Far cooler than the things we say in Utah, like mountain Ma- and dirty sauce. soda. Oh. <laughs> We sell, we sell like Brass ass. Gosh, Agrilord, <laughs> please send us more. I need it. Okay, so Agrilord's nomination. This is uh, something we talked about a couple weeks ago. Something that I said made me really sad. Riot Games, the publishers of League of Legends, uh, made the decision to basically shut down all operations of their uh, esports in um, the Oceanic region, which was New Zealand and Australia, and I think a few Pacific Islands, actually. Um, That's and weird. it was a bummer. It was sad. I mean, I'm sure it was, it was always, a. I think there were always struggles. Uh, I think Australia, especially their internet is notoriously expensive and bad. So, you know, it wasn't that there was a really strong, um, infrastructure. And I know that their, uh, teams in the, uh, worlds generally struggled, but as Agrilord pointed out, like they did have some some successes and they were able to pick some wins off of really good teams in the past even way back when so that was kind of a bummer it seems crazy like they're keeping their esports going but they've canceled a region yeah of the world yeah if i don't care if they're the best look cleveland browns haven't been shut down (laughs) yet uh, so you can keep the OCN. They never. They are never good. They've never been good at anything. Have Actually, they year, ever even good. gotten close to a Super Bowl? Oh my gosh! They don't. They haven't even. They don't. They're not allowed to say the words <laughs> "super" and "bowl" in the same sentence at their club. Uh, all right. So Peterson, why don't you give us your nomination for worst decision? <laughs> Okay. Okay. This is one. <laughs> this is one that made me so happy because I was so confused at this decision. This is a terrible business decision. There was a a battle royale game that was canceled this year. The game was called The Culling Two, and, and it got cold. It got canceled because it was a pay per match model. 
which is exactly what you want in a battle royale. I can see them sitting around saying, saying, you know what? People play battle royale games. They die and they just want to keep going, right? They want to keep going. Um, so yeah, let's make them pay for that experience, which that is the antithesis of a battle royale. By the way, you also had to buy the game. The game itself was not free. You, every, you got one free game a day. And if you wanted to keep playing, you could purchase a second game in like, of course your game went bankrupt. Of course your game doesn't exist this anymore. Is this is so horrible. Crazy. Why would you do this? That they thought they could get away with this. There is no like existing model that would, I guess like they took a, like a mobile game like a passive mobile game farming model and applied it to a battle royale. It's so bad. Yeah, they took the they took the mobile game model and they're like, yeah, you can play one for free. Fine. You want to keep yeah. going? You need some more energy? Yeah, sure, because this is this that. is less aggressive than Clash of Clans. This is like Heyday, Farmville, those types of things where Oh man, it's just that is- and and Shocking. the game itself, you can go. You cannot play this. It's uh, you can look it up on Steam. I'm looking at it right now, but there is no play or buy button. The reviews are very negative. The gameplay isn't good. Like if you have a pay per game model, you have be to have the best. the best, most stable game that's ever happened. Mm-hmm. Because if your game glitches out and you die. I'm going to actually kill somebody. <laughs> I've spent literal money. Like it's not like oh the game glitched. Oh, I'm rolling my oh, eyes man. in frustration because I have to boot it. Now I have to reboot it. I'm rolling my eyes in frustration, and this cost me money. What? I can quantify uh... how big of a pain in the ass your game is now. So people get super crazy on Tarkov when they lose. Because you lose all the stuff that you brought into that match. It's a pretty, pretty mm-hmm. much a battle royale game. And, man, I could not imagine the rage when people lose and spend <laughs> $6. Yeah. Or whatever it costs to, for the, each game. Yeah, no. dude. Can you imagine? This is the worst. To me, this is a horrible horrible decision it's up there this is why it's a nomination this is the one of the worst decisions i've ever heard of yeah um aaron what is your nomination for worst decision my nomination comes from you know the best shop in the land uh <laughs> the, the the game stop uh, they, brilliant. Yeah, you know, they made some pretty pretty awesome decisions. It was kind of hard to choose between that for um <laughs> and uh you know the the TikTok kind of dance off for hours. Dance for hours. Yeah, you know, that's that's dance not too monkey, bad. Dance. Uh but I think the best decision they made was to stay open during, you know, early early in the pandemic. <laughs> like March. Um because you know they're they're an essential business. People need their freaking games, man. So they stayed open, <laughs> dude. The, the amount these... of scrambling that GameStop's PR <laughs> shop was doing day to day when these shutdowns started happening, and they're like, "No, guys." They're telling their GameStop managers, these guys that are making barely over minimum wage and have to dance for their hours. They're telling these GameStop managers that if a NYPD officer comes and tries to shut down the store, they are to physically fight that officer to the death. <laughs> Dude, so if you because remember, they got to stay open. If you remember early on in the early on in the COVID pandemic when they they shut everything down and they said okay only essential businesses can stay open gamestop had the audacity this was like restaurants like people needed to feed themselves and that is it it's like grocery stores stayed open uh gamestop stayed open wait what gamestop tried to make the case that they were an essential business and stayed open. It lasted like two days 
before someone was like, wait, why is GameStop open? You guys are not essential. And they're like, no, 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 listen, listen. And then they go into some crazy reasoning, backwards reasoning as to how they can be essential. Like, listen, people during the pandemic, they need their used copy of Mario All-Stars on the on the uh, Nintendo 3DS. Dude, it's they, like, no, what? The, the truth was that they were genuinely arguing that their computer parts that they sold, yeah. like Which, these guys were saying they're essentially Radio Shack, and they have like one shelf with a couple cables on it. Like there is absolutely <laughs> yeah. no, no person on have Earth a headset or something. who is going to GameStop to pimp out their home office. <laughs> no and it, it wasn't, wasn't even a good lie it was the laziest lie and it wasn't until all the rage that they're like oh okay okay here we go so we'll we'll stay open uh but we'll do like curbside uh pickup and then give people like time off paid time off and yeah uh they're they're just they're, and that's the is, part that's the part where the guy raises his eyebrows and he's and he puts his hands out like eh? Eh, is that enough? You guys, uh, you guys need to shut the fuck up now and let us uh, keep doing dumb shit again, huh? Huh? Because they are never doing things proactively or doing things in the best interest of even the company itself. They're just doing stuff. They're the- just doing stuff and reacting and patching holes, and the company's falling apart. And instead I'm- of responding to that and trying to stem it, they're just reacting to it. Yep, I'm confident they have. No business plan. No. Their business plan is no. flying by the seat of their pants. Yeah. <laughs> they have no plan. Why do we need a plan? We already have a business. We're game Dumbass. <laughs> the it's plan just, is to have a business. Done. <laughs> it's just a constant All right, let's take apology. lunch. <laughs> that's all just a constant, is. Yeah, that's all GameStop has been. <laughs> has just been a constant apology. Dude, I remember way back in the day, back in like 2012, when they had a game that included, uh, there was a game, an Xbox 360 game that included a uh, code for like another copy of a different game. And they instructed, they sent out an email. This was covered on Kotaku. They sent out an email to all these GameStop managers to open these games, remove the slip, because they sold the physical copy of that game and they didn't want it competing. Oh Remove the gosh. slip and then sell those games back as new. This is like seven years ago, man. These guys have been doing this shit all <laughs> along. The writing on the wall has been on the wall for like a decade plus. <laughs> they just are the worst company. They're the worst business. They did, It's like they actively want to fail. They're trying so hard. They They're really actually doing are. a pretty good job now. Um, real quick. Uh, just to kind of reiterate how insane this is, let me tell you the list. I found the list of what was deemed essential services. Transit, oh. <laughs> police, fire, health care, grocery markets, pharmacies, banks, gas Radio stations, <laughs> and GameStop. And Dude, what? what? How could they even? I, could, I, like, I don't know. GameStop? These guys are so bad. <laughs> oh, okay, man. so our last one is not for GameStop, but rather a man who was on a quest to become a GameStop. This is I love, I love this Frederick so Lopez Jr., who was sentenced to 10 years in prison after robbing four GameStops at gunpoint. He Why? St- Why are you robbing GameStop? He stole 131 thousand dollars in merchandise (laughs) and thirteen hundred dollars in cash and only one of those actually had value because dude you literally just sold your stole yourself a job i feel (laughs) like we've covered this before anyone that's knocking off knocking over a gamestop or breaking into valve and stealing a bunch of games friends you are not stealing money you are stealing work you, you will have, have to, to work sell to all of this. Sell that shit, and it will be not unlike a job. <laughs> so just go get a fucking job, guys. If you or or crazy thought, steal money, guys. Oh my gosh! S- stop stealing stuff and start stealing money. It's so much better than stuff because you don't have to sell it to get money first. 
Maybe, dude. Yeah. So the, he Texas stole a hundred and thirty-one thousand dollars worth of merchandise. I don't want a hundred and thirty thousand dollars in... worth of anything. Dude, that's like a semi full of gold, cocaine. Dude, it's. Getting... I love these things, but I don't want a hundred and thirty thousand dollars <laughs> worth of them that's because of I don't know pops. what to do with that. <laughs> what do I do? With all of that shit. Dude, it's going to take him three years to sell all this. He yes. should have just got, he could have gotten <laughs> a degree and gone to college and gotten promoted four times <laughs> Dude, before he sells, before he makes a hundred thousand He's going to have to keep an eye when you're selling this much product. He's going to have to keep an eye on his seller rating on eBay. Oh he's going to have gosh. to respond to customer service complaints. He's going to have to do all of these things. He's going to have to have a UPS account <laughs> and like in good standing. Like this is so <laughs> poorly thought out crime, guys. <laughs> Ten years. You Steal know what? Money. He deserves it. He deserves every single one of those years. <laughs> When rich people, the richest of people out there, steal stuff, do you see them stealing stuff, friends, or do you st- see them stealing money? They are always stealing money. They get it. The they riches get it. get it. Why do you think they're so fucking rich? They know that you steal the money. Okay, and just like our uh, worst name nomination, the worst decision had two honorable mentions, and the rules will, because uh, they were just too good. Too Same good. rules will apply uh, with our runoff. We could have two runoff elections. It's never happened before. Um, okay, so our two honorable mentions for worst decision. The first one is Oculus requiring a Facebook login. Ooh. Adamantly requiring it. They yeah. are like, they are sticking to their Facebook guns. Page and don't you try to make a fake Facebook account to get past this because oh, then know. they will brick your Oculus and Mark Zuckerberg will come to your house and kick you right in the crotch. Don't worry. He's a little guy. It won't hurt that much. He is ro- a ro- partial robot, though. So hopefully he doesn't kick you with his robotic hopefully legs. He's not wearing his metal legs those that day. <laughs> um, the other honorable mention goes to NBA 2K21 for their un skippable <laughs> ads in a $60 video game. Because that's what you want. <laughs> that's bold. We should have a boldness award for the, <laughs> these these executives that are making the decision to like I don't know make a t- battle royale game that you have to that's a pay to play or all of these are bold decisions putting unskippable ads in two K twenty one very very. Oh, do you know what uh, uh, one of the unskippable ads was? Hmm. Uh, the Oculus Rift. Oh, of course. It or the was. Oculus Kill Quest too. That's Zuckerberg was, yeah. was like, I got to get on this. Wait, they're playing a video game and they can't skip it? They can't get out of this? <laughs> oh, they're stuck. They're not just going to quit the game. They're not going to click the little X up top like a YouTube video. No, Dude. they're going to watch our whole... Oh, Zuckerberg's is dream is that you are you have your Oculus on with your Facebook account, and it's tracking your brain data, and it puts an ad in front of your eyes, and you're like, oh my god, 30 seconds. Well, I'll use this as an opportunity to get a rest from the headset, and you reach back to un... To un to pull it off and it tightens. You hear a little click. <laughs> yeah, it's locked just itself. the slightest click, and you know this is an unskippable ad, and you are just <laughs> stuck in that VR headset. And somewhere Zuckerberg's Dude, like, "We are bringing technology that connects people." Don't you, you understand? Gave- you just gave Zuckerberg, he's not even listening. You just gave him the weirdest robot boner ever just by talking about that. He had to he... unscrew his smaller one and put the bigger one on. <laughs> he is. Like, this is this is a two meter idea. Um, all right. So that does it. You guys, with a, with a joke we about Mark it. Zuckerberg's robot penis. That's how we were closing out the blursies. That's how we're closing out 2020. I love it. Um, that said, we had suggestions. I believe, did these come from Danny? Danny. Danny Danny was not here today. We originally had hoped to have her on, but she's not feeling well, and we sent her our best. And thank you seriously so much to Aaron. Kudos to Aaron for jumping in an hour and a half before the show starts. Uh, just stellar work. Um, so we, Danny actually suggested something that we love. And by the way, feel free. 
we had a listener suggest that we change Dice of Destiny, and we just totally changed it. So you guys, if you have ideas, we love ideas. We're not guaranteeing we're going to do them, but this one we are going to do. Danny suggested that for next year, well, she suggested it for this year, but we weren't tracking it, so there's no way we, we could have done it. But next year, we are planning on adding two new Blursty categories, one for worst feature, and oh, the and other love this one. for worst bug. Mm-hmm. Oh, come on. So good. Worst feature, I think, would cover things like the unskippable ads, the uh, other things. And I think we may, we will track all of our categories this year. But on the chopping block, we've been discussing getting rid of worst sequel because sometimes it's not the best. Um, Mm -hmm. The first year we did the Blursties, there were like a ton of shitty sequels. So many. But since then, it's been a bit of a stretch on a couple Mm -hmm. years. Uh, So worst sequel we were going to ditch. And the other one was worst writing, writing. because those two are which again stretchy sometimes. Sometimes are sometimes are really really good, and sometimes they're not. So so we'll track them if they're great. We'll have twelve blursties next year. If they're not, we'll have ten and the two fresh ones. So if you guys see, and we'd love your help on tracking these because we track them throughout the year. So if you see bad bugs, you see terrible features, you let us know, and we will add them. All right, Peterson, give us the skinny. And so now that the Blursty nominations are complete, they are out there. We are going to start posting these on social media. We'll post them on Discord for you guys to go vote. So please, please, please go vote because this is the best part of the Blursties is getting the listeners input on what was the actual worst of the year. And this year we do have an incentive. Thank you for Thanks to uh, Neil LaPointe of LaPointe Joints. He has made a game called Gun Pig, and he has given us uh, some codes for the Switch port, which just came out this uh, in 2020. Uh, just barely Switch came game. out. And he said, uh, he get, he said, hey, guys, I'll give you three, three codes for it. So I have three codes for Gun Pig made by one of our listeners, Neil LaPointe. It's fantastic. Uh, so vote and you can get a code for just for voting. I'll put you in the running for a code for gun pig. So look out for that in our discord on our Facebook and our Twitter. Uh, we will have uh, all sorts of polls for you guys to go vote for these blursty categories. So before we close it out, I will reread. Oh my goodness. I will go through all of these uh, and our nominations. Our first is most overrated. We have Super Mario 3D All-Stars, Among Us, The Last of Us 2, and Cyberpunk 2077. For least favorite character, we have Cliff Blazinski, Dr. Disrespect, Randy Pitchford, and all of the characters from Marvel Avengers. For worst sequel, we have NBA 2K21, Ready Player 2, Battletoads, and Doom Eternal. For worst name, New World. Under Night in Birth, EXE Late, CLR, BlizzCon Line, Max Bellend, and our honorable mentions, ReZero, Starting Life in Another World, The Prophecy of the Throne, Warface, Prime Gaming, and Tokyo Mirage Sessions, Sharp FE. Worst Decision, we have Riot Games canceling the Oceanic League, Pay Per Mat... Pay, the pay per match battle royale game. What was it called? The Culling Two. The Culling Two. GameStop stays. GameStop remaining open amid the COVID crisis, and the armed robber stealing himself a GameStop worth of merchandise. Our honorable mentions are Oculus requiring a Facebook login and the unskippable ads in 2K21. All right, folks. Thanks for sticking with us on this longy. Don't forget to vote. Come hang out in our Discord. And no, I will not tell you how to find it. I'm JD, logging off. This is Peterson going AFK. Aaron, rolling out. Peterson Productions! Oh, yeah. That should cover me for the year. That's one New Year's resolution done. What's next?